You are Locked On Astros Postcast. Part of Locked On Sports Houston on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Locked On Astros Postcast via the Locked On Network live on YouTube in audio form after it's done. Anywhere they can, that you get your podcast, if you go check out the Locked On Astros page, another great podcast to go check out. Those guys are going to have great content for you as well tonight. Uh, unfortunately, we're doing this once again. Same old song and dance. And uh, no, I don't have, if you're watching this show live on YouTube, I don't have the full hoodie on here because I'm depressed or anything. Uh, I am freezing cold in my home, and that's where I'm at. I am a little bit depressed, though, is how the Astros are playing as well because they are an absolute disaster. Again, they lose, and they get crushed early in the baseball game. We'll get through all of it as we move along. Uh, how can this get better? The answer, I don't know at this moment. Maybe I'll come up with it in the next 10 minutes or so. And at the end of the show tonight, I want to address the Reggie Jackson comments because I think this all with the start that they're having to this season kind of culminates with this. But first, I need to uh, go ahead and let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get a $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's right, $150. Bucks, win or lose, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started so let's talk about this tonight as the astros get smoked once again early it was awful before the, you know it you a blink of an eye and it's seven to one it's been the trend of late let's go through their their last five baseball games this is what they've gotten out of starting pitching now blair henley we all had no expectation for him he pitched a third minute and gave up five runs. Spencer Aragetti in his start the other day, he uh, pitched three and gave up seven. Hunter Brown went two innings and gave up nine. Hey, at least J.P. France went four today. He gave up eight. You're not going to win baseball games, ever. There's nothing that you can do unless your starting pitching doesn't pitch like this, like they've done over the last week. The only guy that gave you a chance was Christian Javier, and your offense didn't do enough, and then it wasn't good enough overall. The question needs to be asked, are we witnessing the end of this run? I understand that it is April the 12th. April the 12th. It is way too early for this in big picture scale of things because there is more than enough time to fix things. But honestly, when you look at the baseball team, you look at the health situations of what is going on, how is it going to get better? I I don't know at this moment. They're not going to suddenly get healthier in the starting rotation. I mean, Justin Verlander is going to come back. At, we we assume after the start this weekend for the Corpus Christi hooks up in Frisco. We have no idea when From Valdez is coming back. I mean, it's elbow inflammation is what they say. What happens if he goes out there and starts to ramp up and throw a bullpen and the elbow, it's worse? God forbid there's something that's torn there. You mean to tell me, based off what you've seen so far, I'm officially concerned. I'm going to go through all those games. I'm officially concerned about Hunter Brown. We we all talked him up like he was the next big, big, baddest thing in the world. He's got stuff, but last year he fell apart as the year moved along. He's had a fall apart season to this point of the year. Are you going to get Spencer Aragetti? I talked about this the other night. He might be the team's best prospect in terms of pitching. He's also elevated by the fact that their farm system is just hot garbage. One of the worst in baseball. You, you're going to count on him to go out there and, and help carry the staff when they need it? JP France tonight. He's been incredibly consistent since he's been up in the big leagues. But he went out there tonight and he wet the bed. They can't figure it out. Christian Javier isn't going to carry the staff by himself. Not possible. 
And like I said, the tie-in with all of this, we'll get to the Reggie Jackson comments as we wrap things up because I think that today is a day for you to let it out. And if you're sitting there at your computer or your phone right now, wherever you're watching, thank you again for watching, all of you joining us here live on YouTube. I really do appreciate uh, everybody that's been getting in on it, hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to do that. It means the world that you guys are uh, going on this journey with me from the years of doing this together on the radio to now doing this with Locked On. I'm extremely excited about it, uh, and we're having a lot of fun so far, even if they're losing baseball games. And now you get to see how I do the shows. This is how I would do the postgame shows from home on the radio for years. I'd be in this room right here. Um, sometimes I'd be dressed like this. Sometimes I wouldn't be dressed at all. But now I'm always clothed, period. And sometimes I was doing it in celebration, and sometimes I was doing it out of anger. Well, tonight I'm in anger again, because I, like you, am pissed off at what's happening. I have not liked the energy one bit. Um, I've, I I will say they finally showed a little bit of a spark late, but I'm not going to get duped into a final score there, where the Rangers aren't using high-leverage relievers, and the Astros, in a game that's decided at that point, go out there and get a bunch of runs. The only moment, if I'm looking for any tiny, 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 tiny silver lining, was Jordan getting hit, which isn't a silver lining. It clearly pissed Kyle Tucker off because he then smacked his second home run of the game and he bat flipped the hell out of it because he was pissed off. They better be pissed off. If they're not pissed off at themselves, what are they doing? They shouldn't be showing up every day. You are the Oakland Athletics if you're not mad at what you're putting out there. And I do think that if you went in there and closed the door to the clubhouse and got the true thoughts, which I'm telling you guys uh, is a little bit more interesting than you believe, they are. But, but realize this right now. There is only one team in Major League Baseball right now, one, that has more losses on the season than the Astros do. It's the Miami Marlins. You are at this point two games behind the Oakland Athletics in the American League West. You're four and a half games out of the division lead right now, which is crazy at 4-11. and 11. The Rangers went on a little bit of a skid uh, after their hot start, but look, they bounced right back tonight and beat the Astros, do it handily. I, I don't want to live in a world where the, the run is going to come to an end, but look, it's life. Everything does come to an end. I don't want to get all deep on you here on the postcast tonight, but that's just the truth. And at some point, this was going to come to an end. But not like this. This isn't supposed to be how it's supposed to go. They're just supposed to fade gently and softly back to about an 83-win team and miss the postseason or be a wild card team and get popped out in the, in the wild card round. Not coming out the gates 4-11. How about this tweet from Brian McTaggart, MLB.com, a few moments ago? The 4-11 and start is the Astros' worst since 2013. You want to know how bad that year was? Oh, that was the final year of the three years in a row of 100-plus losses. This is a team that basically returned the exact same roster as last year. Again, pitching situation health-wise, atrocious. We do have to, there's always that caveat. You can't ignore the fact that they've had incredibly bad luck with health. But you have to play with who you have. And this also goes back to your offseason and you covering CYA, cover your, and they didn't do enough of that. And it's biting them in the rear end at this very moment. If you go back, this is again from this tweet from Brian McTaggart, to August 13th and include the playoffs of last year, and this is even crazier, it makes no sense. The Astros at Minute Maid Park, from that stretch to now, are 9-28. and 28. Embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing what they have put out there for a team that everybody puts their passion into, that you guys go out and spend your money on, which is a good thing. They're giving you right now the worst product that you could have imagined to start a season like this. There were no indications of this happening in spring training. At all. I think I, like most of you, came into this season sitting here saying, it's just going to be another year of Astros baseball. They're going to go out there and they're going to win a bunch of games. They're going to roll over people and they're going to be great. And none of it 
None of it is happening at this point of the year. Can this be fixed? How can it be fixed? We'll discuss it shortly here on the Locked on Astros postcast. Right now, I want to tell you about I bought a spring is here. So it's, you know, it's out with that old and in with the new. Don't splurge on anything new without getting cash back in return when you use iBot. iBot is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average iBot user earns up to $256 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. That flight you've been eyeing or the fancy dinner you've been craving. Join over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers, including all your favorite grocery stores, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code Locked On MLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code LOCKEDONMLB. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google Play or App Store, and use code LOCKEDONMLB. It's the Astros, Locked on Astros postcast here live on YouTube. Thank you to every single one of you joining us. Of course, if you're looking for this show, if you miss any of it in its audio form, Head over to anywhere that you get your podcast, whether that's Apple Podcast, Spotify, Odyssey. If it has a podcast, search for Locked on Astros and you will find this there. It is titled right there at the beginning, Postcast. You can listen to this show and then, of course, you can listen to the Locked on Astros podcast. A fantastic place to get your Astros takes as well. I know those guys are as mad as I am, as mad as you are. and um, At some point, it would be nice to do this show where it's not something awful. We've been doing this for just about a week now. Uh, Actually, I think tonight is our one-week anniversary. So if you've been with us from day one, hit that subscribe button on YouTube. If you haven't, thank you for being here. Uh, But in our one week together, we have done two shows where they've won. That's it. They split against the Rangers, of course. That was great. It was nice to have when they won a couple of baseball games. I wanted to believe for a brief second that they were on their way back. But the question is now, how can this get any better? And I'm going to be just blunt with it. I don't know if it will, based off of what they have pitching-wise. And I really do feel bad in this situation for one man when it comes to how poorly this is going. Joe Espada has waited and waited and waited to get an opportunity. Dusty Baker finally retires, and Joe Espada gets the job, and this is what's happening. Now, could he maybe rile some feathers and get some guys fired up a little bit more or do something? Maybe. I haven't had a big, huge issue with how he's managed baseball games. I don't think that there's a lot of reason to to think this this, this is a Joe Espada problem. I mean, how is he going to fix the fact that his starting pitching over the last week is going out there and giving up seven-plus runs every single night and can't get through two, three, one, four innings, whatever it is. It's a no-win situation. for no. Even if Dusty Baker was managing this team, nothing's different right now at all. Nothing. They're 4-11 and because they can't pitch. They can't get deep in games. They can't hit. Period. But if it keeps going down this road, I worry for Joe Espada's job security. Somebody always ends up being the scapegoat. He's a prime candidate for it. Rookie manager, veteran-laden team, that's a possibility. So I hope for his case that they figure it out a little bit. They get things going because this just cannot continue. And you continue to think that, hey, you're going to be a a contender at the end of the season. You're going to reach the point where you're going to sit back and you're going to say, do we need to consider the thought of trading away players? The Astros have never done that in this era. I mean, this has been a decade run now almost. This is what year, 
mean, I know that they're looking to go to the ALCS with the eighth street. This, this run started in 2015. I, 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 my jaw's almost on the floor at how awful it has been. And again, when I go and look at the rotation, I look at what they have there, I look at the bullpen and how the bullpen's being used. And then you add on to the fact that in their bullpen, they don't have a bunch of guys with minor league options, which is a huge problem. Huge. They can't call guys up and down. I mean, hell, the number of pitches that um, that Brandon Bielak has thrown in the last week, it's it's unsustainable. You can't be a pitcher, a big league pitcher, and do this consistently out of the bullpen and expect your arm to survive. Chandler Rome tweeted it earlier. Brandon Bielak has thrown 146 pitches in games in the last seven days. That doesn't add in the warm-up pitches on the mound when he's in the game or all the warm-up pitches in the bullpen to get ready before coming in. He's not going to be able to sustain it. I mean, it's just, it's not. But that's where they're at because their starting pitching is forcing them to do this every night. Like, Joe Espada's trying to run it out as long as he can. But these pitchers keep going out there and then, I mean, you you can't, because if he, if he didn't pull them out earlier, we'd be sitting here screaming at him for not pulling them out. But look, if this happens again in the next couple of nights, like whoever's out there is just going to have to completely wear it and pitch five, six innings, throw 110 pitches, and be done with it. Because Brandon Bielak and Seth Martinez and all these guys out there that they've been going to, they're not going to be able to sustain it. What they need tomorrow night, and it's going to be very interesting to see, Renell Blanco has been fantastic this season. He threw a no hitter, then he went into a no hitter. What six and a third or whatever against the, or five and a third against the Rangers this past Sunday. They just seen him recently. How will it look? But he's going to have to come out tomorrow night, and he's going to he's going to strap men in. They need six out of him, minimum, minimum, in the worst way possible. And if they don't get it, they're they're in serious trouble. They don't have a day off until Thursday. They're in the stretch of 13 in a row. And oh, by the way, this homestand, where again, the Astros have been absolutely horrendous at playing baseball since the month of August of last year, if you heard that stat a moment ago. The homestand is not going to get any easier. Still two more with Texas. Then, oh, wait a second. Here come the Atlanta Braves to town for three after that. The Braves, who are eight and four so far this year, and they might be without Spencer Strider, but they have the, one of the best, best and most loaded lineups out there in the league. You really think that that lineup against this Astros team? You think this Astros pitching staff, this starting staff, isn't going to give up more than or give up have more games where they're giving up five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten runs, whatever it might be? Oh, you bet your you know what they will. It's going to be a bloodbath, possibly. Let's hope it's not, but it has the potential to do that. I want to start uh, finishing up the uh, end of this show, which isn't coming for a while, by the way. we still got plenty of time left here on the Locked on Astros postcast. Thank you to all of you watching us live right now on YouTube. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, please, and thank you. I would greatly appreciate it, of course. Uh, and, of course, to find this on podcast, search for Locked on Astros anywhere that you find your podcast you will get this in its audio form. It's usually up about 10 to 15 minutes after this game, so you can listen to, listen to it again or you know, make it your first listen tomorrow when you wake up uh, and hopefully have a great Saturday. We'll do this again tomorrow after the day game, 3.05, and on Sunday, of course, when they play at 1.10 uh, for that one. But in this last few minutes, I want to discuss the Reggie Jackson comments because I think this is all a culmination. The Astros' terrible, terrible start to the season, these comments from Reggie Jackson tell you why they're here. And it's an embarrassment on the franchise. And we'll discuss it in just a moment here on the Locked on Astros postcast. But I need to tell you guys right now about FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam ducks. 
all on an app that is safe and secure and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Now let me tell you about LinkedIn. Are you a small business? Are you out there struggling to make deals? Business to business selling is tougher than ever. And that's why I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high-value customers, drive higher revenue, and increase sales performance. Sales Navigator helps you target the right buyers, surface key signals such as uh, changes or which the accounts you should prioritize, and shows you hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data enabling you to unlock conversations with the people that matter. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That is linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on and get started. Okay, we will start to wind things down here on the Locked on Astros postcast. Thank you to all of you that have joined us here tonight live on YouTube. Again, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and find it on podcast. Wherever you get your podcast, search for Locked on Astros. You can get our podcast here, the Locked on Astros guys as well. And you can take in this show in its audio form whenever uh, you want to at your please, uh, whenever you please. Let's talk now to wind this thing up. The Astros pitching depth is a massive problem. We're watching it unfold. Now, I again, we will recognize the situation for what it is. Incredibly unlucky to start the season with some of the health. Verlander, I mean, look, a 41-year-old coming into camp, you're always going to be holding your breath with a 41-year-old pitcher. It is what it is. But comes in, slow, shoulder, got to deal with it. Romber starts off the season, ah, there's the elbow. Out. We don't know how long. Jose Arquiti, of course, captain always hurt, gets hurt in camp. Who knows how long he's going to be out? So they lost three key cogs really early. Like, if they have those three, we're probably not talking about these issues of at least not getting deep into baseball games. We're not talking about Blair Henley. And for as good as Eric Getty was in the spring and as high as they do value him, he might not even be pitching for this baseball team at this point. But the Astros had a chance to cover their own butts this past offseason in a few fa- few ways, and they did so to an extent. Now, you might not agree with it, which I still do question the allocation of money of Josh Hader, $95 million. Does that fix this baseball team? No. In fact, you could argue, of course, that you use that money by spreading it out to multiple players in other spots, and you give yourself more depth to this roster. And one of the moves that they could have made, which they reportedly were trying to do, was to go get Blake Snell who sat, he was one of the Boris Four, sat on the market forever and could not find a contract from anybody. Lands with the Giants on a two-year $62 million deal, which is a little bit funky, has an option, uh, vesting, um, has some uh, incentives in it that can make it even higher. The payout of it is a little bit odd. This is a two-time Cy Young winner. This is a guy that, you know, might walk a lot of guys, doesn't typically go seven innings in games, it's five, six innings, but it would have been an unbelievable addition to this roster. This team could have, you would have talked about on paper, Verlander, Snell, Fromber, and Javier. I mean, you're lethal, absolutely lethal when you have that. Well, Reggie Jackson was on the um, New York Post uh, podcast with the uh, guy, John Heyman, who don't ever get too hot and bothered about that guy. If you've listened to me for years, I've told you a story about he's a big fat liar half the time. Um, And I think Joel Sherman is the other guy that does this show. So Reggie was asked about the Blake Snell situation. And he said, we have a great leadership group with our GM. He's talking about Dana Brown, of course. Also, we have a couple of other advisors, Craig Biggio and Jeff Bagwell, who are very much involved in our decision-making. I'm I'm in our decision-making. I'm involved. Jim takes those decisions and puts them together, listens to our management and coaching staff on the field and our GM and his staff, and then, of course, some of the analytics come into the future of a player, and our decisions are made that way, along with being fiscally responsible. 
being fiscally responsible, I think, is what kicked us out of the Snell, Snell deal. He signed a two-year deal. I want to say sixty-two million. That's too much for him. He's been a he's been hurt a couple of times, and I think there's incentives on top of that. He's also gotten an option on his own. Uh, and between the four or five people that make decisions with the Astros, we don't play that game. Okay, Reggie Jackson. When the Astros landed Reggie Jackson to be an advisor for the franchise, it was a cute little story, right? Astros, Yankees daddy, Astros continuing to destroy New York. Yankees legend leaves New York to come join the Astros. He has no affiliation with. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was cute. It was fun. It's embarrassing to this point. It is embarrassing, and I say this to an owner that I love, that you love overall, Jim Crane, who's given us this era of Astros baseball, an era we have never seen in the history of this franchise, the best that they've ever been, two World Series titles. I get when you are embarrassed as an owner the way he was with the sign-stealing scandal. He decided to be more hands-on with things. It's gone too far, and it's why they are here. It's why they're having these pitching issues that you're seeing where you've got a Blair Henley pitching, or you've got Eric Getty, and you've got these all these guys that are just incapable of going deep into games. And it's, part, it's the reason why you are 4-11 and 11 to start the year. Reggie Jackson, Craig Biggio, Jeff Bagwell have no business making baseball decisions. We all watched the Houston Astros be a cutting-edge franchise. They, they took the movement of analytics with Jeff Luno and his staff, and they said, Hold my beer. We're going to do it one more than everybody else. And you want to know the truth of it? It works. It worked. It's why they have this core foundation of players that have allowed them to have this run. It's why their evaluation on unsung guys in the Dominican or Venezuela or Puerto Rico or whatever they're getting them for all the Latin players, it's why it's worked. But for some reason, 1990s baseball has crept into this franchise with Jeff Bagwell having a say, with Craig Biggio having a say, with Dana Brown being the poor guy that doesn't even get to be a GM. He's just a yes man. And old-ass Reggie Jackson, who has no business at all making baseball decisions. That has led to this, period. Jim Crane's making a mistake. He's leading his franchise back down a road where they will become a bad team again. And players won't want to play here. Somebody needs to shake him. You got to bring the nerds back. All those guys that I mentioned know so much about baseball. They played it at a high level. That doesn't mean they know how to evaluate. That doesn't mean they know how to put together a roster. The nerds, the Jeff Lunos of the world, the Sig Madals of the world, the Mike Eliases of the world that were all here that put this thing together for all these years, those guys knew what they were doing. Those guys knew how to value it. James Click was one of those kind of guys. He came from a Tampa organization that did the same kind of stuff. But we reverted to playing baseball in 1994 here in Houston, Texas, to evaluating rosters to 1994 again. Oh, well, how does he look when he runs around the bases? How, how, what, what's his batting average look like? It makes me just so deeply mad, if you can't tell. I, I jokingly said it last night, and I truly do mean it. If you want to fix things with your front office, you want to fix your farm, so you want to do all those things, Somebody shake Jim Crane and bring Jeff Luno back into the fold. I can tell you for a fact that man would come back. I know this. And I'm not asking him to take Dana Brown's job. I mean, president of baseball operations. You got to get these old heads out of there. But it's, it, it is a buddy-buddy system. And Jim Crane, after what happened, is not willing to loosen the reins. When Jeff Luno was here, Jeff was in charge. 
Jeff did as Jeff pleased. Jeff would go get the approval for money from Jim, but Jeff ran this organization. A qualified baseball man, a qualified executive, a qualified evaluator, a qualified everything else that these guys aren't. They're not qualified as people that evaluate baseball players like that. They're not qualified to understand the numbers, and they don't probably understand half of it. They have eliminated a cutting-edge analytics department and just cut it in half throughout the years. And analytics aren't the only reason that you win. I get it. But But the proof is in the pudding. When they were that franchise, they were better than this. They weren't coming out every year and going 4-11. and They weren't sticking themselves in these terrible situations when it comes to how the roster is constructed with lopsided salaries and lack of depth here and lack of depth there. They weren't doing that to themselves. I'm truly baffled that Reggie Jackson is out there speaking on behalf of the Houston Astros. It has to end. This is where ego and hubris gets in the way of everything. And he has a ton of it. We know that from his baseball career. Hell of a player, though. We know that anybody else that's played at that level is going to have it as well. And you have an owner that listens to it. He goes to hit those are his golfing buddies, his hangout buddies, whatever kind of buddies they are, those are his guys. And, and again, Dana Brown might be capable of being an excellent GM. He might be capable of having an analytics department be in place and getting the information from them and using it to evaluate how he does things. He's handcuffed. James Click became handcuffed. They lost their harmony, their togetherness, front office-wise and management-wise and coaching-wise when Jeff Luno and A.J. Hinch were let go. I mean, Dusty was a guy that galvanized the clubhouse and the players loved him and they won for him and they, they won consistently. There was no cohesion between he and the GM. And from things I've heard, there was no cohesion between he and Dana Brown last year. They didn't like each other, from what I've heard. I don't know how accurate all of that is, but some of the things I've heard, they didn't like each other. They didn't work well together. Now, Dusty walks away. He gets his guy in Joe. But I, I think you just go back and listen to how Dana Brown talked about the offseason, about moves and about money and this, that, and the other. I mean, Dana Brown didn't make the decision to go give Josh Hader $95 million. Jim Crane decided all of a sudden, ah, I feel like spending $95 million today. That, that's on him. He's got to get out of the baseball decision-making process. You know, they always talk about sustaining the window and sustaining success and doing all these things. You're not going to do that with Reggie Jackson, Jeff Bagwell, and Craig Biggio helping you make decisions. Not going to happen. No way around it. They don't know what they're doing. You're taking bad advice consistently from these guys. And... I don't want this run to end like any of you. But then to also have the comments about we don't play that game two years, 62 million is too much. Has Reggie Jackson even like pulled up his baseball reference page? The, the man's won two Cy Young Awards. Two. Two. You don't win those by mistake. Reggie should know that. He's won awards. You should know that. But also, it's rich. When you go out there and say these things, then you're spending the most money you've ever spent this year, and you also, again, threw $95 million at a closer. I love Josh Hader. I think Josh Hader is unbelievable. $95 million for a closer. He pitches one inning. One inning. 
And sit here and say, you know, the money, this money, that, we're fiscally responsible. You're spending $250 million right now on a team that's that's 4 and 11. You can't be, and that's the issues I've had throughout the years. You can't be saying one thing, acting in another way, and then having this flawed, you know, belief system that you have about how you pay players. It's a it's a mess. Whether it's look, you got Jose Abreu, thirty six at the time, three years, almost sixty million dollars. Joke. You gave Michael Brantley last year twelve million bucks to sit on the bench until September because his shoulder was shot. You gave Lance McCullers a few years ago eighty five million dollars to be hurt all the time. Because you aren't taking the advice of your baseball people that are trained and bred to do this. And then you go throw $95 million at a closer hoping to to cover up a problem. And then when it doesn't, you're sitting here handcuffed. You've got no farm system to trade from. You've got no money sitting around to do it. What are you going to do? How are you going to fix it? I don't know. And then the, oh, we can't pay this guy. We don't do long deals. Stupid. You can't pay a 26-year-old a a 10-year contract. Oh, no, he'll be 36 when it ends. It'll be well worth, it'll be well below market value at that point. And, oh, my goodness, what would we do with a 36-year-old that's making 30 million compared to the 20, uh, the the, the 36-year-old that's making 20 million who sucks? Ah. I don't want to see Reggie Jackson at another Astros game or wearing an Astros hat, whatever it might be. I want the 1990s baseball and the guys from that era to no longer have a say for this franchise. Just as simple as it gets. I want to do these shows where we have a little bit of fun, a little bit of joy, and it'd be a great, great time. I still have hope that they can get there but right now everything sucks and feels just horrible enjoy the rest of your friday night we will do this again tomorrow when the astros and the rangers play game two of the three game series ronel blanco can you please save this franchise tomorrow night i again want to tell all of you thank you so much for going on this journey with me in post-game coverage with Locked On. Locked On Houston Sports is where you can find us there. Uh, If you're looking to uh, find us on YouTube, if you're new to the YouTube page, you can, of course, hit the subscribe button. I, of course, would greatly appreciate that. This is all new to me. We're all learning it, and I'm having a good time so far. That was the most people we've had watching this live so far, and I I truly do mean it. It is awesome, and I really, really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to continuing to grow this with you guys uh, every single night. And it's not just going to be Astros, of course. We're going to have uh, Rockets, Texans, Cougs, all of it covered for you. Go watch the uh, or go listen to the Locked On Astros podcast as well. When you search for Locked On Astros, wherever you get your podcast, you'll find this postcast, and then you'll find their show as well. Again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll do it again tomorrow after the Astros and Rangers. Hopefully we won't have any yelling to do. That'd be fantastic. Until then, have a great night, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.